you like electricity, but worry about global warming? Would you like a wind turbine in your garden? Would you prefer a solar panel on your roof? Have you thought about going nuclear? Could it be the solution to the world's energy needs? The following programme will attempt to answer essential questions for students who may be thinking about building their own nuclear power plant. Finland seems a pretty good place to visit for some Q&A about building a nuclear power plant. In Okaluoto, there are two nuclear plants already in operation. A third is on its way. It was 20 years since the last nuclear power plant was built in Western Europe, so it took more time than expected for the whole industry to start up again. It's the first nuclear plant to be built in Europe since the worst nuclear accident in history at the Russian reactor in Chernobyl more than 20 years ago. Finland may offer some valuable lessons about the do's and don'ts of building your own plant. Where should you build it? How does it really work? How much will it cost? How safe can you make it? They are making reinforcement on the roof of the reactor building, thick enough to withstand an airplane crash full loaded with fuel. What to do with radioactive waste? We must find flawless blocks of bedrock where to uh, construct the final disposal tunnels. There are many questions you'll want answered. A lot of people thinking of building their own nuclear power plant have their eyes on Finland. But the company building the plant in Finland is the French company, Arriva. Arriva has built a hundred nuclear power plants. Their international headquarters is in Paris, also worth a trip to get advice from their top scientific advisor. It's a complicated way to boil a lot of water, cheaply and without smoke, somehow. <laughs> so, just how much should you expect to pay for this very complicated way to boil water? Uh, for a big plant now, 5 billion euros. Big one, 1600 megawatts. Finland has chosen a nature reserve on its west coast as the home for its new atomic reactor. And what are the top tips for where to build yours? First one, you need cooling water. So it will be on the seaside or close to a big river. Uh, and then you would rather have uh, a place where, uh, which is uh, seismically calm. A place which is seismically calm will mean fewer worries about earthquakes. Anything else? Not too close, but not too far from a big town, because you need customers and you don't want simply to, to carry, to transport your electricity far away. And not too close, of course. If you've got the budget and think you've found the perfect spot, what's the big atomic trick behind boiling some water? Chemistry, life, is all about uh, atoms exchanging electrons. Over the past 50 years, what all nuclear power plants have in common is that they run on nuclear fission. Only very, very heavy nuclei can, are so big that they can un undergo fission. Of all known substances on Earth, uranium atoms have the largest nuclei. Scientists discovered that if you fire a neutron bullet at the nucleus of a uranium atom, you'll cause the nucleus to split giving off heat, energy, and more neutron bullets. They become so unstable that they split into two parts and release a lot of energy. It also emits new neutrons. And those neutrons, in turn, can be absorbed by new nuclei. And that's what's called the chain reaction. One fission giving birth to another fission, and so on. A single particle starts the reaction splitting the uranium atom. Here now is the release of energy as heat and blast. Those neutrons bombard other uranium atoms, causing them to split and split still others. The result? A chain reaction. To control 
your reactor, you have to make sure that you have exactly the same number of neutrons always. To manage the fission process, fuel for most nuclear reactors is only about 5% pure uranium. Raw uranium ore has less than 1% uranium. Processing a pellet and Enriching the uranium closer to 100% gives you material for a bomb. Water in the reactor core plays a critical role to slow the speed of neutrons during fission. Buffers between the fuel rods are made of material that absorbs neutrons. Raising or lowering the buffers acts as a throttle on the fission process. If you want to stop everything, you just insert a lot of absorbers and the chain reaction stops. When shopping around for a new reactor, you'll discover there aren't really that many models to choose from. The dominating species, if you want, on the market. It is called pressurized water reactor. The new Finnish plant is a pressurized water reactor, or PWR. It seems to be the most popular model on the market. In a PWR, fission heats water in a pressurized reactor core which keeps it from boiling. The pressurized hot water flows through a network of pipes which boil fresh water in a second chamber. There, the steam is generated to drive the turbines. The two-chamber design minimizes the risk of radioactive steam reaching the turbines and being discharged into the environment. Post Chernobyl meltdown, the plant in Finland has added some new safety features you take into account the very, very low probability of having the worst possible accident. And the worst possible accident is you melt down the totality of your, of your core. If that happens, and if this kind of molten lava is able to get out of the big pressure vessel where it is contained, then we have a kind of ashtray, if you want, where this molten lava will be spread and then solidified in situ, where it is. The cement ashtray under the reactor core is complemented by a thick cement cap above it. You have an internal shell which is keep to protect the outside world from what would happen bad inside. And you have an outside shell which is to protect the reactor from bad events outside. Aggression, uh, plane crash, uh, you name them. However safe you build your new nuclear power plant, there's no escaping the fact that it will generate hazardous radioactive waste. Next door to the new power plant is another nuclear reactor called Olkiluoto-1, which has been in operation for 30 years. Workers in plants, as well as their tools, are constantly monitored for exposure. Your fuel, once in the reactor, you kind of burn it, in fact, you fission it. So after a time, four, five years, it can no longer produce power. That's what is called spent fuel. And the spent fuel, you remove it from the core to put new fuel instead. We are now going to the intermediate storage for spent fuel, where the fuel is kept after it has been used in reactor. The fuel that we have here uh, in these pools are from the whole 30 years of operational time of OL1 and OL2. It's so deep that if you happen to swim so deep, then you would get too close to the spent fuel and that would be dangerous. But otherwise, it's not dangerous to swim uh, in the surface, but, it, but it's not recommended because, because of the spent fuel is down under. A few kilometers from the temporary storage pools, Finland is preparing a more permanent home for its spent nuclear fuel. While nuclear plants have been generating waste for more than 50 years, Finland is on track to being the first place in the world to have a final resting place for its most hazardous nuclear waste. Finally, you have to do something with the waste. Burying it very deep underground is the plan. The final disposal depth 
is about 400 meters. We will uh, reach it in a few weeks time. An underground network of zigging and zagging tunnels is being excavated from solid bedrock. We know the history of the bedrock here. It's 1.8 billion years old. The bedrock is the only medium that we know for sure to be predictable and stable for thousands of years ahead. We are going to drill holes on the tunnel floor. Into these holes, we are going to place the final disposal canisters in a vertical position. These canisters are huge, and each canister weighs about 24 tons. The overpack of the canister is copper because it resists corrosion in oxygen-free conditions. And the conditions down in 420 meters depth, they are oxygen-free, and copper will last there for thousands and thousands of years. There should be enough storage space for 60 to 70 years worth of high-level nuclear waste. Eventually, the radioactive waste will decay and be safe to re-encounter. And how long will that take? It's about 250,000 years. That's the horizon. It's a big time as compared to human history. But it is a very tiny time as compared to geology. Our aim is to start disposal 2020. Most of the tunnel is dug, and the welcome mat for nuclear waste is almost in place. The Finnish group called TVO, who are paying Arriva to build the plant, eagerly await its completion. But there's a slight glitch. The delay is, uh, of course, a big disappointment for us. The Finnish plant is a few years behind schedule and more than a billion euros over budget. This prototype was built in a country where we had no previous experience. We didn't know um, uh, the network of, of subcontractors. We didn't know where was the good and where the less good. And there's the sticky question of who pays when the price tag more than doubles. The plant supplier, in this case consortium Areva Siemens, is responsible for the complete delivery of the power unit, including time schedule, everything. Well, I, I think that as usual, there will be uh, some kind of negotiation litigation and uh, the cost will be kind of split. Uh, which percentage? Uh, that will be the object of the ne <laughs> negotiation. One final tip on building your own reactor. If you are a newcomer, don't try a prototype. <laughs>